welcome to my kitchen. My name is Becky, if you are new, and I have 10 recipes here that we are going to attempt to make today. I am 39 weeks pregnant, and I didn't think I was gonna get any big, massive freezer cooking day in, but today is the day, and we are going to attempt to get all these recipes done. The first thing I'm gonna do is get the hot water crust pastry made for the pasties. These are a family favorite. My mom grew up in Michigan. My husband was born in Michigan, and this is a Michigan staple. So in this bowl, we are gonna put two cups of lard. I wanna get this going first because this needs to chill for an hour and a half. So while this is chilling, we will prep and start a bunch of other recipes. To our two cups of lard, we are gonna add two cups of boiling water, and this is gonna melt the lard. I'm gonna break this up just a little bit so that it'll melt a little bit faster. We also need to add a little bit of salt, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add that right now. Let's go over the other recipes we are going to make today or that I have planned to make today. So the first one is pasties, which is this. We're gonna do lasagna bolognese with a bechamel sauce. So instead of using a ricotta or cottage cheese, we're gonna make a white sauce that is oh so good. We're gonna do three different marinated meats. We have teriyaki chicken, honey mustard chicken, and what I refer to as smashed chicken. It's a lemon Worcestershire chicken that my mom made growing up and it is so good. Then we're gonna do sweet and sour meatballs, stroganoff, two different styles of curry. We're gonna do tikka masala. The reason I wanna do that is because I want to get better at making non bread. So I figured if I had the tikka masala in the freezer, then when I pull it out to make it, I'll feel inspired to make non bread. And then we're gonna do a pumpkin red curry. And the bonus one that I really wanna to get to is I wanna make some more granola. I wanna make an almond vanilla granola. And those are the recipes that we are going to attempt today. Now I do a couple things before I start a big freezer cooking day like this. The first one is I make sure my dishwasher is unloaded so that as we cook, we can load the dishwasher. The second thing I like to do is take my garbage can out from under my sink, put a new bag in it, so any garbage can go directly in it and I'm not having to even just open and close the door under my sink. It just saves me that little bit of time. And then I did go grocery shopping downstairs in my walk-in personal grocery store and I did a ton of grocery shopping. A lot of these recipes I planned were recipes that I had the majority of the ingredients. I only had to spend about $30 at the grocery store in order to make all these recipes today because I already have a very stocked pantry. So that's pretty exciting. So our lard is just about melted so we can move on to the next step. So to this, we are gonna add, starting with five and a half cups, up to six cups of flour. This is a two cup measure. So I'm gonna go ahead and put four cups in here to start and then we'll see how we're looking. Is a really easy crust to put together. It's very soft because it has all the lard in it and it's very sturdy which is what you need for a hand pie. That's basically what we're making. All right so we're going to add a little bit more. So I'm going to add one and a half cups more and we're going to see where that gets us. So you can see how soft this dough is. This dough is ready to go into the fridge for an hour and a half. And this is only the second time I've ever made these, so I did have to call my mother-in-law. I FaceTimed her and I said, is this dough look right? Because it is very sticky and wet. She said, yes, trust the process, put it in the fridge, and we'll be able to roll it out. While we're in the fridge, I wanna grab out the next ingredients. We're gonna get going on the bolognese sauce. So that can be cooking down on the stove while we then make the marinated meats. We need carrots for the pasties and for the bolognese, so I got all those out, we're gonna wash them. We need celery for the bolognese, and then we need potatoes for the pasties. So I'm going to wash all of these up at one time, so that I only have to wash these vegetables once. 
for the three different recipes we need them for. So I'm gonna give them a good scrub. I have a bowl down here. We're gonna put the clean ones in. These are our homegrown potatoes that I'm really proud of. So I'm not gonna peel them. So I wanna give them a really, really good scrub. So they're nice and clean. But I wanna save all that peel to put into our recipe. If you're wondering how I use freezer meals, I don't just use them one after the other after the other. So the goal today is to try to get at least 20 meals. So we're gonna to try to do 10 recipes and get double of each recipe. And these are for nights when I don't feel inspired to cook or I don't have the energy to cook or the time and I don't want to fall into the trap of getting takeout. So I keep these in my freezer so that on those nights I can pull them out and use them to save my sanity. And then on nights that I feel inspired, I'll cook dinner with whatever I feel like cooking that night. Look how pretty that is. I not only like to have a garbage bowl, but I like to have a compost bowl. So we're gonna put our scraps from our veggies into that compost bowl. For the bolognese, I'm going to use the help of the food processor to chop up our vegetables because I want them really, really fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and peel all the vegetables or all the carrots for the different recipes we need so that I can just get that out of the way and we can be as efficient in the kitchen as possible. For this celery, I'm just gonna cut the ends off and I'm just gonna cut these into chunks because this is gonna go in the food processor and I'm gonna let the food processor do the work. For the bolognese, same. For the carrots, this is gonna go in the food processor. For the bolognese, and I'm just gonna do some chunks. And we are doubling the bolognese recipe. So this is enough celery and onions for two recipes. We still need to cut some onions for the bolognese, but we'll do that in just a second. When I process vegetables in a food processor like this, I like to keep the vegetables separate so that they dice up evenly. Let me show you the texture we're going for. Really fine. This is really exciting. We are starting to cook with fire. I want to get this warming up so we can put our carrots in here, our celery and our onions when they're ready. So I'm going to start with maybe a three tablespoons or so of just some olive oil. We're going to add our carrot. I don't need to get it all out because we're going to add our celery. There's two that were a little bit bigger chunks. We're going to add that back in. Now we're going to add our celery. To this, I'm going to add some garlic that I pre-peeled. We're probably going to add the equivalent of about 10 cloves there. And I'm gonna let that just blend together with the celery. I wish you could smell it already. It already smells so yummy in here. So we need a lot of onions today. We need onions for the curry, for the stroganoff, for the bechamel sauce we're making, and for the pasties. So I am going to quickly get a few onions ready to go in the bechamel sauce. Once that's going, then I'm gonna dice and slice all the onions for the rest of the recipes so that I can just have this step done and it'll just be sitting and waiting for me while we go ahead and move on to the next recipes. I won't be chopping onions doing something else and then having to come back and chop onions for a particular recipe. I will just get it all done at one time. But I will stop to process the onions for the bechamel sauce just so that that is cooking down on the stove while I then come back and process the rest of the onions. 
And all these scraps right here, my onion peels, my celery ends, and my carrots, I'm gonna keep all of this and I'm gonna put it in a freezer bag, stick it in the freezer. Next time I make broth, I will dump all of these scraps in my broth so that I can make broth for pennies on the dollar. These are pretty, kind of like a medium to smallish size onion. So I think I'm gonna put three and a half of these in our bechamel sauce. I, I don't think we need onions for our sweet and sour meatballs. I'm gonna check that real quick. You know what, I didn't print that one recipe off. I have to look that one up on the website. All these recipes will be linked down in the description box so that if you want to try to make them, you can. We do need onions for the meatballs as well. I keep calling it a bechamel sauce, but we are currently working on the bolognese sauce. So these onions are not going in a bechamel sauce, but the bolognese sauce. I got all the onions peeled. Now I'm gonna get all the onions chopped for the different recipes. And I have a bowl here. I'm just going to put all the onions in once they are all diced up. I'm gonna do a fine dice on everything because that should work for every recipe. The reason I wanna get it off the cutting board is I wanna process the carrots and potatoes once we process all these onions. So now we have all the onions chopped for all the recipes. I'm gonna go ahead and get the veggies chopped for the pasties. So I'm going to do potatoes, carrots, and onions in the pasties. Traditionally, the pasties have rutabaga in them, but when I went to the store, the store didn't have rutabaga, and I have a lot of potatoes that we grew in the garden, so I'm okay with filling these pasties more with the homegrown potatoes than with store-bought rutabagas. So we are gonna skip the rutabagas and get these beautiful potatoes in these pasties. Now I have just a couple different varieties of potatoes. You could use whatever you want. And I'm gonna cut them really pretty finely. I have about an eighth of an inch dice on these potatoes. You can cut them a little bit bigger if you want, but I prefer them to be a little bit smaller so that they cook up and they're super nice and tender in the pasty. We're making great progress. We are almost done dicing all the vegetables, but our bolognese sauce is ready for the next step. So we're gonna go ahead and get this going. Traditionally, we would be adding Italian sausage and ground beef to this, but I did not thaw any sausage. There's supposed to be sausage in this recipe and the pasty recipe, but we're gonna go ahead and just use ground beef for all these recipes today. So we're gonna put four pounds of beef into our vegetable mixture. I'm gonna wash my hands and then we're gonna break this up and let this cook. While we finish making our pasty filling, I'm gonna turn this up. This is where you can sometimes just make adjustments depending on what you have on hand. It doesn't have to be exactly, I would prefer sausage in this because it would add you know, a little bit more depth of flavor, but we're just gonna go with it. I'm not gonna stress it. I'm not going to send Josh to the store for me. He happens to be working from home today, which is kind of fun. And so we're just gonna go with what we have here. So now on to our pasty mixture. I was going to replace all the rutabaga with potato, but I think I'm gonna replace some of it with carrot. So we need a total of 13 cups between the carrots and potatoes. So I'm going to start measuring out the carrots to see how much I chopped up and we're just gonna count, and we're gonna call that the carrot and rutabaga. You know what could be good in this too? Instead of rutabaga, if you had it, would be parsnips. 
So we're gonna get those in there. And then to this, we're gonna add two onions, so about two cups. And I'm glad I didn't cut and peel all these potatoes because that would have been too much. I just added two and one third cups ground beef. One third of those cups was supposed to be sausage, but like I said, I didn't have that, so we're gonna skip that. We just added salt, good amount of black pepper. This is onion powder. I'm adding onion powder because I want more onion flavor than just those two onions were gonna give us. So quite a bit of that. That's not in the recipe, but I'm adding it anyway. And then I did peel fresh garlic, but I want that for other recipes, so I'm gonna put our freeze-dried garlic in here. And that's all you add for the filling. So I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna mix all this together. And then our pasties are basically ready to go. We just have to shape the dough and fill them. And that's it. It is gonna take me a minute to mix in all this ground beef with the vegetables. That's how easy it is to make the pasty filling. Really simple, humble, modest ingredients, but so good. Oh my goodness, these are so good. We like to serve them with ketchup, but you could just eat them plain. I think what we're gonna do next is get our meatballs going. So I'm gonna grab the ground beef out for the sweet and sour meatballs. Get that in the fridge. For our meatballs, we need garlic. And I'm gonna go ahead and just in the food processor, dice up all this garlic so that I don't have to dice it up by hand. This just had the vegetables in it. So we're gonna use all this garlic today. I'm not worried about any of the celery or carrots or onions getting in this garlic. It'll be fine getting in the other recipes. So in a matter of a few pulses, we have our garlic diced for the rest of the recipes. And then we also need some breadcrumbs for this recipe. And I don't have any breadcrumbs crumbled up. I have some bread in the house. So I'm going to, in the same food processor, even though I just did garlic, I'm gonna dice up some breadcrumbs and that garlic can kind of work its way into the bread and we'll just add more flavor to our meatballs. This is some bread that Josh and I are not gonna go through before it goes bad. So I'm going to go ahead and just breadcrumb it all up. That's even a word. I'm gonna turn it all into breadcrumbs is what I should say. And then I will just freeze whatever we don't end up using today. So that I can have bread So that I can have breadcrumbs in the house and I don't have to make them every time. You can also use, if you don't have breadcrumbs, chopped up rolled oats. That works really well, especially if you're gluten-free. I've done that many times. Especially when I make food for other people, oats is a great substitute. That's perfect. I'm just gonna reuse my bag that the bread came in. And we're gonna stick these breadcrumbs right in this bag. No need to dirty another dish. I'll try to go through these before, and I'll even stick this in the freezer. I'm not worried about that going in the freezer whatsoever. I think we are done for, with the food processor for the rest of the day. So I'm gonna get this counter wiped up a little bit and then we're gonna throw this food processor attachment into the dishwasher just to make sure we clean as we go. We need to get the oven preheated for the meatballs. So I'm gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Get that going. And it looks like our beef is cooked. Oh yeah, perfect. We even have some browning on the bottom of the pot. See that, that's perfect. So now we're gonna add the last few ingredients so this can simmer away while we finish the meatballs. Some red wine. We're gonna use that red wine to deglaze the bottom of the pot. 
tomato paste. I'm going to add a little red wine to the tomato paste. I'm going to shake that up. We're going to use that to get the rest of the paste out of here. This recipe calls for a bunch of herbs, but I have two jars here of spaghetti sauce that I put way too many herbs in it when I made it. So I'm going to just put two of these jars and lead out the rest of the herbs before I taste this. And to cut all that herb flavor that I have in these two jars, I'm going to add two jars of crushed tomatoes. But these crushed tomatoes also have onions and garlic in it, so it's just going to add even a little bit more yummy flavor. These are all homegrown ingredients, so that's a pretty big accomplishment for me, something I'm really, really proud of. So we're going to get this in here, and we're going to let all of this simmer together while we finish up a bunch of other recipes. So as soon as we get the meatballs in the oven, we're going to start on the marinades because those are so easy to put together. We're going to feel like we got a bunch of stuff accomplished and it's going to give us the energy, motivation, and confidence to get us through the rest of this cooking day. So that looks so good. I'm going to set the lid on a little bit cattywampus so that it can kind of reduce down and let some of that steam out. I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit. We're going to get these jars in the dishwasher. I am going to get a little bit of water in each jar just to get out any of that goodness and we'll put that in our sauce. I love opening jars of things I've canned and using them because it meant that all that effort of putting stuff in my jars, growing it, preserving it was worth the effort. If these jars just sit on my pantry shelf, all of that effort was for naught. So this is awesome. And we're going to use a bunch more jars as we continue cooking today. The reason I like to clean up as I go and kind of start with a clean kitchen is so that I can enjoy this process. It's a lot of work to cook all these meals and when we have a clean environment it makes it that much more <laughs> enjoyable. So for our meatballs. I have four pounds of ground beef in here. I just put two eggs in here because I am doubling this recipe. So we're going to add two cups of onions, maybe two and a half cups of onions because I like onions. Two cups of breadcrumbs. These are the breadcrumbs we just made. Pepper. And can you believe it? I just used all that pepper that we made together. I pre-ground it I think in August. We go through a lot of seasonings around here. This is some salt, two teaspoons of salt. Couple, maybe about a tablespoon of ground ginger. You could use fresh ginger, but I don't feel like peeling fresh ginger today. And I am gonna add a little bit of extra onion powder. This is not, it's not in the recipe, but I like the flavor of onion powder. And then I'm also gonna add some garlic powder and fresh garlic. I think that just gives you a little bit more depth of flavor. Fresh garlic is in the recipe. I'm just adding a little extra. Before I get in there and I mix this all up, I'm going to put away the things we're not going to need again for the day. So we don't need any more of these breadcrumbs. So I can just throw those in the freezer and I have breadcrumbs next time I need them. So now I'm going to get in here, mix this up. I almost forgot. I freeze dried zucchini shreds and I want to add that to my meatballs. So we're going to add some of these in here just for a little extra nutrients. And then I'm also going to add quite a bit to our spaghetti sauce. These freeze dried zucchinis are going to help thicken that sauce so that the tomatoes don't have to take as long to cook down and add a little extra nutrients. Our meatball mixture is all mixed up. I have two casserole dishes here. We might be able to get a third, I'm not sure, but we're gonna start with two, and it smells really good and it's not even cooked yet. 
I've got my cookie scoop. This is my favorite way to do meatballs. And we're just going to, uh oh, got stuck there. Start scooping out the meatballs into these casserole dishes. You know what? We might actually get three dinners worth out of this, which would be awesome. Our favorite way to eat these sweet and sour meatballs is over rice and with some sort of green veggie, whether that be broccoli, green beans, or something like that. I am going to get three pans out of this, which is awesome because this is one of our favorite dinners. These types of recipes are some of my favorite to do freezer meals out of because it really doesn't take that much more effort to double the recipe and you're just saving yourself so much time in the kitchen overall between cleanup and dishes and getting ingredients out and thinking. It's just so, so convenient. Now, if you don't wanna make your own meatballs, you could certainly make the sweet and sour sauce that we're gonna make in just a minute and put it over store-bought meatballs and that would be really, really good too. I just happen to enjoy making my own meatballs so that I can in control the ingredients, but that's totally up to whatever your preference would be on that. So I am gonna take the time also to go through and roll these just so that they have a nice shape to them before we put them in the oven. We're gonna get our meatballs in the oven and we're gonna cook them. That's another nice thing about this recipe is they are already cooked. So when you make them, all you have to do is reheat them. And we're gonna make our sauce right here while those cook in the oven. So we are gonna start with brown sugar. I'm doubling this recipe. And then we are gonna add some white distilled vinegar. Flour. This is our homemade ketchup. And you know what I should have done? I should have put that apple cider or that white distilled vinegar in here so I could rinse out this jar. We'll just put some of that in there, the lid on it. And then we need to add sriracha, but I don't have any sriracha because I'm making my own homemade hot sauce. I do have homemade sriracha downstairs in the basement, but I don't feel like running down there right now. So I'm gonna add gochugaru. I think that's what this is called. They're Korean red pepper flakes. They're sweet, they're delicious, and I haven't had any in my house for way too long. If you've watched June from, I think the channel is Delish. She talks about these red pepper flakes and they're so good. They, they have a little bit of heat, but mostly a sweetness to them. So I'm gonna add three pinches of that. I can link these down below. Once you start using these on roasted vegetables, you will want them in your house all the time. And I haven't had any in probably two months because I can't get them at my grocery store. I have to order them on Amazon and I just hadn't got around to it, so I finally did, and I'm excited to have them back in my pantry. So now we're just gonna whisk this sauce together and let this thicken on the stove, and that's how easy it is to make this sweet and sour sauce. So while this is thickening up and our red sauce is almost done, we're gonna whip together our marinated meats because that's only gonna take a matter of a few minutes, and we'll be able to check three things off our list. Before I fill my bags with chicken and one with pork, I'm gonna label these 
Last time I did freezer meals, I forgot to label my bags. And so I have three bags in my freezer right now. And I'm not exactly sure which marinade it is because they start to look a little bit similar when they're in the freezer. So the first one we're gonna do is honey mustard chicken. And this was a request from Josh. This is probably his absolute favorite marinade and one of my favorites as well. I'm gonna not only do a chicken one, I'm gonna do a honey mustard pork loin. And we cooked that on the grill over this last summer and that looks incredible. But you could probably cook it in the oven. I probably wouldn't cook it in the crock pot. I cooked a pork loin in the crock pot the other day and it was not my favorite. What are we doing? We're doing teriyaki chicken thighs. And I'm also putting the date and today is December 1st. Happy December. The first chicken recipe we're gonna do is mashed chicken or the lemon chicken. And the reason it's called that is because you're supposed to pound it out really thin, but I don't do that. I just cut the chicken breasts in half lengthwise so that they're nice and thin. This chicken is so incredibly delicious. And I like to use chicken breast with this, but the other recipes we're gonna use chicken thighs. This chicken you can eat over rice, this marinade, or you can cook it and put it in a salad and it tastes so good. All of this chicken is from Butcher Box. This one's a little bit small, so we're just gonna leave that just like that. I've been getting my chicken through Butcher Box for about a year and a half now, and I love the quality of organic chicken, and I like that the chicken breasts are a normal size. They're not crazy, crazy huge. And I can link them down below. They have specials all the time. The reason I found Butcher Box is because they do 100% grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And you know that I buy most of my beef, 99% from local farmers, but I just really stand behind their company and what they practice. And they have specials going on all the time. So I can link them down below if you're interested in them. But I do get almost all my organic chicken from them and I've been so happy with them. And they have really good quality pork as well. So we're gonna get these marinated meats put together super quickly. I have these, these were a gift to my PO box and they are a game changer when it comes to making marinated meats and freezer meals. They are bag holders, so I can link these down below. Love it. But to put the marinated meat together, we're gonna to put a half a cup of brown sugar in each one of these. We're gonna do two at a time just because it's easier. It doesn't take any more time to measure out two marinades than it does to measure out one. So this is the teriyaki chicken we're starting with. We have half cup brown sugar, half cup of soy sauce. Looks like I need to open one more. This right here is why I love having a stockpile so we don't run out of things while we are cooking. It happens sometimes, but that's my goal to try to avoid a quarter cup of oil. I'm using olive oil, but you could use whatever kind you want to use. Good amount of garlic. Ginger. And I'm not really measuring this. We're gonna use our Korean red pepper flakes. You could use a little bit of sriracha or just regular red pepper flakes if you wanted. But like I said, these have a very sweet and unique flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And then a splash of sesame oil. This is toasted sesame oil. And that's all you need for your teriyaki chicken. So I'm gonna take it out of the holder, get the excess air out, and we're gonna mix this up. Directions on how to cook these will be listed on how to cook them in the oven, the grill, the, the air fryer, the instant pot, or in the oven. I prefer to cook these type of marinated meats either on the grill or in the oven because I find that they get a little bit soggy and soft when you cook them in the crock pot because that will be listed as well. 
but you can absolutely cook them in the crock pot. That is an option. I'm going to go ahead and refill our little stands with another batch of chicken. This next one we're going to do is honey mustard chicken and I couldn't quite reach it, honey mustard pork. I'm telling you, these little bag holders are really nice. But I'm gonna do that honey mustard in just a second. The next one we're gonna do is the mashed chicken because I need, I'm doing three honey mustard chickens because I just happened to thaw that amount of meat and I asked Josh out of the three, which one did he want the most of? And his favorite is the honey mustard. Josh's favorite might be the honey mustard, but one of my favorites is this lemon chicken. We're gonna start with salt. We have some homegrown oregano. Lemon juice. The star of this recipe is the Worcestershire and the lemon juice together is an incredible combination. Olive oil. A healthy amount of garlic. And now we have two more meals. You can just as easily make one marinade as two at a time. And that's why I do what I do. I do like to give them a good mix. And I am going to freeze these flat because it takes a lot less time for something flat to thaw than if I bunch this chicken up like this and I freeze it in a ball. That's gonna take a whole lot more time to thaw than one individual piece of chicken at a time. So I've got a cookie sheet here where we are going to lay our marinated meats. I'll carry that out to the freezer and we'll let them freeze nice and flat. Oh, <laughs> I did want to mention, I do need to add pepper to this, but I used all my crushed pepper and I need to go run downstairs and get some more pepper and I'm not really worried about not having pepper in these two marinades and in the next one. Or maybe I'll go down and get it. <laughs> I probably should go get the pepper. I like fresh cracked black pepper, but I don't like having to crank a black pepper press. So I buy black pepper and whole peppercorns, and then I blend a bunch of it up in the blender at one time, and I use that in my cooking. The flavor's better, and I don't have to do this that often. For the honey mustard chicken, we're gonna add pepper and pork, because this one is pork tenderloin, salt, equal parts stone ground mustard, and I'm just eyeballing this to oil. I am gonna kinda measure this out Then we're gonna add garlic, and this is the last of the fresh garlic I have. So in these two, we'll add dried, or freeze-dried, I should say. And a pinch of oregano. I used to think it was silly to do marinated freezer meals, meats, because it really takes no time to put together a marinade, right? Maybe a couple minutes to pull everything out. But the thing is you have to think about it in advance in order for it to have time to marinate. But if you make these up and you put them in your freezer, when you pull them out to thaw, the whole time they're thawing, they're marinating. And so you don't have to think in the morning, oh, I need to get all the ingredients out in order for it to marinate for a few hours. So it just, it's so convenient, friends. Into the freezer, these go. I just 
just realized I did not thaw enough beef to make stroganoff. I purchased mushrooms to make stroganoff for a freezer meal, so maybe this coming week, if I don't get to making it today, we'll make stroganoff a different day and I'll make double and I'll freeze it. But for now, the meatballs are out of the oven and they shrunk a little bit, so I took them from the three pans and I put them back in two because I thought that this would be a better amount for dinner so we can have leftovers. I let the meatballs cool along with the sauce and all we're gonna do is pour half the sauce in one pan, half the sauce in the other, and we are officially done with this recipe. I'm gonna get all the sauce out of this pan. I did take a paper towel when these meatballs came out of the oven and I just used the paper towel to get any of the excess grease out of the pan because I didn't want that going into the final dish. I'm gonna stick this pot in the dishwasher. And now we have two more meals that are incredibly delicious, ready for us whenever we want them. The next thing we're gonna do is make the bechamel sauce for the lasagna, but I wanna get these lids on here and these are ready to go into the freezer. Now these are amazing containers, perfect for freezer meals. I can get away from using foil and saran wrap. These were a gift in my PO box and apparently I looked high and low on Amazon and I could not find them, but you can get them at, what is that? QVC and sometimes they have them and sometimes they don't. So if I can find the link at QVC for these, I will link them down below. But these things are amazing. So I'm gonna get these in the freezer and let's get the lasagna made. We still need to taste test this sauce. Our bolognese is all done, it's thickened, it's rich, it's beautiful. Oh my goodness. You could eat that by the spoonful. That is so good. And when we add our bechamel sauce, it's gonna be even better. To our butter, we're gonna add fresh nutmeg. You don't wanna skip this step if you can avoid it. This is what gives a really amazing level of richness. To that, we're gonna add equal parts flour to our butter. And we're gonna cook that together for a few minutes. While that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and add pepper. Traditionally, you would add white pepper, but I don't have white pepper and brown pepper or black pepper is just fine for me. It's more about just if you didn't want to have the color of the pepper in your white sauce, but this is gonna go into lasagna, so it's not gonna matter at all. And then I'm going to do a little bit of salt. Now that our roux is cooked for a few minutes and we have all the other ingredients, we're gonna add the last ingredient, which is our milk. I'm gonna do about two cups, maybe three cups at a time. Stir that in, let that thicken, and then we'll add the rest of it. I have the flour and butter mixture mixed into that milk, so I'm gonna add the rest of the milk. This is gonna take a few minutes to thicken up fully for us. While we wait for our sauce to cook, I'm gonna get going on the granola. I wasn't sure if we were gonna to get to it, but we are going to get to it since I have a little bit of a break here. Now the last granola we made together was a maple pecan granola and it was fabulous. But I wanna switch it up a little bit. You know me, can't follow a recipe to save my life and I can get a little bit bored with the same old, same old. So this time we're gonna experiment and we are going to do a maple almond granola. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna use the same recipe, but I'm going to just change up the flavor ingredients a little bit. So we're gonna add six cups of oats to our big bowl. I don't know how many that was, was that three or four? 
I'm going to say it's three. It might have been four. So if we end up with seven cups of oats, no big deal. That's totally okay. Because this is going to be a vanilla granola, I want to put a good amount of vanilla in here. And I don't want the maple flavor in this granola, so I'm going to do brown sugar this time and white sugar and leave out the maple. But I am going to use the same ratios. And <laughs> if you all watched when I made the granola last time, I didn't realize that the maple syrup kept glugging into the granola and it was definitely a little bit sweeter than I would want. So I don't want it that this sweet this time. Oops, sorry, that's loud. So we're gonna add some brown sugar, some white sugar. That's what I'm substituting the white sugar for the maple syrup. I'm gonna stir my sauce. It is starting to thicken up just a little bit, but not quite where we want it. Since I'm not fully paying attention to it, I'm gonna turn it all the way down so that I don't mess it up while I'm over here. We're gonna add one cup of flour. You know what? This time I'm gonna do a half a cup of flour. And then one of you gave me the suggestions of using egg whites as a way to get thick, clustery granola. And I thought that was genius. So instead of doing the full cup of flour, we're, we're gonna do one cup. plus two egg whites. And these egg yolks won't go to waste. Put that in there. I just had to rinse my whisk off to make sure that flour doesn't clump to the bottom of the pan. Because that sauce is almost done. I think I'm gonna turn the heat off. I really don't wanna mess that up. To our granola, we're gonna add three fourths of a cup of a neutral flavored oil. I'm not gonna add the water because I added those egg whites, I don't think. We'll stir this up and see how this looks. I might need to add just a little bit. Oh, we need to add some salt. And that's how easy it is to throw granola together. Oh, it smells divine. When you're making granola, if you're using roasted nuts or seeds, you wanna add those after you cook it in the oven, which is what I'm gonna do, because I have salted roasted almonds I wanna go through. If you're using raw nuts, go ahead and add them now, and they will toast in the oven. I'm going to put this granola on a single layer. I have the oven preheated to 300 degrees, and I did taste this, and it tastes pretty good. In the oven it goes. We only have a teeny tiny bit of the last granola we made. I hadn't made a homemade granola in a long time, and once you start getting in the habit of it, it's so good, you'll go through it pretty quick. So now let's assemble our lasagnas. You can see that our bechamel sauce thickened up beautifully in the time it took us to whip up that granola really easily and that's all it takes to make a white sauce you could add cheese to this if you wanted and that's basically how you make a cheese sauce for macaroni you would just add cheese mix in your pasta and you'd have homemade macaroni but we're not making macaroni today i did consider it but we're making lasagna i didn't want to waste those egg yolks so i just tempered these egg yolks in with a little bit of the bechamel sauce meaning i had my egg yolks i mixed them up and then i added some of the hot bechamel sauce to it and now i'm slowly adding that into our sauce this is going to add a little bit of richness i didn't know what else to do with these egg yolks in the meantime other than give them to my dogs so i thought let's just add it to this white sauce and it will just deepen the flavor we have all of our components for our lasagna. I'm just gonna reuse the pan that I had some meatballs in it. No need to wash it. I did take out the excess grease, but there's just a few little onions from those meatballs, and that will be just fine. So the first thing we're gonna do to assemble our lasagna is add some red sauce to the base, and that just helps our noodles not stick 
And this is a thick, beautiful, rich sauce. And I don't know if I have enough of these no oil noodles. I think I do actually. We may get three lasagnas out of this. We'll have to see. To that, we're gonna add our bechamel sauce. So this lasagna is a little bit different than the traditional American style lasagna. And then one more layer of noodles. And we're gonna repeat this process until we have the full pan filled. And next time I put the bechamel sauce on, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of our freeze-dried Parmesan cheese. I should have put a little bit of this on the last layer, but I forgot, but that's totally fine. When I was in high school, I did swim team, and we had a swimmer on our team who was a Danish exchange student, and her living situation wasn't working out very well. So my family, we always, my parents were always open to have people come and live with us if they needed a place to stay. So she came and she lived with us for about six months from Denmark. And a few years later, she came back to visit and she wanted to make us a dinner. And she made us this lasagna bolognese with bechamel sauce. This will change your world. It doesn't taste anything like the lasagna that has the ricotta cheese in it that is more like American, I think, style, traditional. It takes a little bit more effort, I would say, to make this style lasagna, but it's so incredibly worth it. It's so worth it. Your family will love it, especially if you're getting more than one meal out of it, like I am here. So it was just always really cool. It's a cool memory anytime I make this that it was made for us by our friend Nina, who is a Danish exchange student. And I had the privilege in college to go visit her in Denmark. And Denmark is one beautiful country. All right, so we have our pasta here. I have enough to make one more lasagna. I don't have any more of these no boil noodles, but I just have regular lasagna noodles. So I'm gonna run downstairs into the food storage room and grab some of those noodles. And we might as well make three lasagnas since I made enough of the sauces to do that. So the top layer is gonna be the red sauce. And I do wanna make sure those noodles are completely covered so that they cook fully. And then we will top it with Parmesan cheese. So there is no mozzarella in this lasagna. It's definitely a little bit different, but it's so good. And it's kind of nice too, because if you have, I always have the ingredients for red sauce. I don't always have ricotta cheese in my refrigerator or cottage cheese, but I almost always have milk. So you can whip up the bechamel sauce really, really easily to make this style lasagna. And most of us have celery and carrots. I just got a third lasagna done. I rinsed out my two pots that I made the bechamel sauce and the red sauce in because we're going to get the curries made up. But my timer went off for the granola. So I'm going to just give it a little bit of a mix. Pat it back down. Just make sure we're moving in the right direction. It looks really good. I'm going to give this a little taste test. Mmm. I think I like this better than even the the other one. We need to let that granola continue to cook. And I just rinsed out. I didn't even have to really scrub these pots. One of the best reasons why doing these big cooking days is awesome is you can just keep using the same things over and over. We're going to make two curries at the same time. An Indian tikka masala and a more Thai based pumpkin curry. With both of these curries, all I'm going to do is make the base. I'm not going to add any vegetables or any meat to them so that when I pull them out of the freezer, I can then decide what vegetables I might have in my freezer, what vegetables I might have in my fridge, and I can use those vegetables in either of these curries. 
and I can either cook up some fresh meat or I can just open a can of chicken or something and add it to it. But we, I wanna make this really straightforward so when I go to cook it, I have lots of options. I just added olive oil into this one for our tikka masala curry. I'm gonna get that warming up. And here, this is more of a Thai style curry, so we're gonna add coconut oil. This one, I'm loosely following the recipe because I don't have all the ingredients, but it's, I think it'll still turn out delicious. In both of these, we're gonna add quite a bit of our pre-diced onions, and we're gonna get these caramelizing. You know what, I'm gonna use all of them, I think. Might as well. We have our onions sauteing away for our curries, and now we're gonna check our pasty dough. I checked it a while ago, and I'm a little nervous about it. It still seems a little sticky. Uh, it feels a little bit better. I don't remember when I made this with my mother-in-law last time it being this soft. I think I might have to work a little bit more flour into it. Let me show you. It just feels a little bit on the sticky side. So what I'm gonna do is put a little flour on our cutting board. I think I'm gonna work it into this dough. And then I did check on the granola and I set a timer for another six minutes. Yeah, this feels just a little sticky to me. So I'm just gonna knead in some flour before we divide the dough up into our 12 pasties. And there's some of the fat right there that isn't all the way worked in, so I wanna make sure that's worked in as well. Even just adding that little bit of flour, it already feels quite a bit better. That feels so good. It smells really, really good too, which you wouldn't think from a simple dough recipe, but oh my goodness, it smells fantastic. Now this was store-bought lard. I'm gonna put a little bit more flour on this dough ball. I do have lard that I need to render down in my freezer. I just did not have the time to do that before doing this big cooking day. So this winter, hopefully, we will get to that project. Lard comes from a pig, and I also have tallow from the local farm that I bought my beef from that I need to render down to. So we'll do that sometime this winter. This one recipe makes 12 pasties. They're very hearty pasties. So now that I've worked this dough into a beautiful supple dough, I'm going to divide it into 12 pieces. I did turn the oven off because our granola is done. I'm gonna put these dough balls into this bowl. Once I have them cut into the correct size, Cutting into dough is so satisfying. I love it. There are 12 dough balls. I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna put this in the fridge so the fat in the dough stays nice and cold. And then we'll roll these out and finish them. But our onions are caramelized and we can finish our curries and have them simmering while we finish up the pasties. The first curry we're gonna to put together is the tikka masala, and I just added a pat of butter. I was supposed to add that earlier, but I forgot. Can you see how beautifully caramelized these onions are? That's exactly what we want. I just sent Josh downstairs to get me some more tomato products. We're gonna double this recipe, so that is garam masala, cumin, coriander, chili powder, turmeric, red pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. So we're gonna stir these spices and spices. The majority of the flavor compounds and spices are fat soluble. So whenever you're making curries or anything where you're using a ton of spices like I am in this recipe, 
You really want to toast the spices in the fat before you add any of the other liquids, and that's really going to help draw out those flavors before you add the other ingredients. You just need to toast them for just a couple minutes. And when you're making things like curries, you do not want to be shy on the ingredients. Or, I mean spices, not necessarily the ingredients, but the spices. This technique is how I have found to have the best curry taste. I've tried making curries in crock pots and things, and you just don't get that depth of flavor if you don't really caramelize your onions first and really caramelize those spices or toast those spices. That's why I'm going through the effort of making a double batch here so that when I warm this up, I can warm this up in a crock pot if I want. But I had a really hard time getting a really good flavorful curry until I started doing this technique. I just added two jars of our onion tomato garlic base. I'm telling you friends, that is my new favorite. We're gonna mix this in. I forgot to add black pepper. So we're gonna let this sit here for just a second and then I'm gonna check my ingredients, make sure I got all the spices. I think, yes, I did miss one, unfortunately. I should have added this when I added all the other spices, but I need to add ginger. So we'll get that in there and we'll let that cook. There's only one more ingredient to add to this, but I'm gonna let this start to kind of meld in flavor while I have all my spices out. We need a lot of these same spices for the, for the pumpkin curry, so we're gonna get that going now. Can you see I caramelized these onions just as heavily in this coconut oil as I did the onions over here? We're gonna start with some turmeric. The rest of the ginger powder I have, black pepper, garlic. I would use fresh garlic in both of these, but I don't have any. Red pepper flake, onion powder. We're gonna toast those spices. And then I'm gonna add two jars of this red curry paste and I'm gonna let this toast in with the onions and the other spices as well. From the same brand that carries this, it is Thai Kitchen red curry paste. They also have a fermented chili paste and I would add a jar of that in here as well if I had that, but I don't have that. The recipe I'm following for this calls for fish sauce. Josh does not like fish sauce at all. I have tried to sneak it into things and Josh has one of the best palates of anybody I know and he can taste it. So I'm not going to put any fish sauce. So that Thai fermented chili paste kind of gives you that funky umaminess you want without giving you that fishiness. But I don't have that today, so we're just going to leave it out. I'm going to start putting some of my spices away. I've got to add, I forgot to add brown sugar. I need to add brown sugar to this, and I need to add brown sugar to our curry. So when I add brown sugar to our pumpkin curry, I'll just add some to our tikka masala as well. Oh, I forgot. I'm going to add a little bit of this. This is the freeze-dried pepper paste from a hot sauce I made. I'm gonna add some of that because this does call for green chilies and I don't have any green chilies. This is now deepened in color. There's some browning to it. So we're gonna add four jars of coconut milk. We're gonna add our pumpkin. This is actually butternut squash that I can that we grew in the garden. We're gonna add two jars of this. We're gonna blend both of these curries up so it's okay that they still are a little chunky. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown sugar to each one of these, along with some coconut aminos into our Thai curry. When I pull these out to make them for dinner, I will garnish them with cilantro, green onion, maybe the Thai co coconut curry with some lime, all different things, but I'm not gonna worry about doing any of that today because we'll do that when we go to serve them. 
The last ingredient we add to our masumam curry is a good amount of heavy cream. This adds sweetness, richness, creaminess, deliciousness. Just look at that. That is gorgeous if I've ever seen. While those are simmering away before we finish out our pasties, I'm going to get these jars in the dishwasher. Our dishwasher is about full. And let me see how many jars we've used today. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 jars I opened. I might open one more jar of tomato base for that musumum curry after I taste it. But that is quite an accomplishment. While our curries simmer away, we're gonna get going back on our pasties. This dough, we roll out into an eight inch circle. So that's what we're gonna do. And I have cookie sheet out here because we baked these and froze them after they were baked. And that worked really, really well last time. So that's what we're gonna do today. So pasties are what the coal miners, I think they were coal miners, they were miners, and they would take them down into the mines because they had a vegetable, a protein, and a starch, and they could eat them easily while they were down working in the mine. Okay, that looks, might be a little bit bigger than an eight inch round. That's perfect. Let's get our filling out. To our round, we are gonna add one and a half cups of our filling to one side. That's why I'm saying it is a very hearty, hearty thing. You can definitely share it with someone. And then what we need to do is add a pat of butter. So I'm sacrificing this whole thing of butter to our pasties. So you just stick a pat of butter on there and we're gonna roll this up and over. I think I'm gonna get a little bit of water. For the next one so I can seal the edge a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now actually. I'm going to take and just put a little bit of water between the two pieces of pastry. And that way we can seal that edge up nicely. And then I'm gonna roll up the pastry to crimp the edge so we don't get any leaking from our pastry. And that is how you make a pasty. So I'm gonna put this on this cookie sheet. These are absolutely stunning. We're gonna do this again. I just preheated the oven to 350 degrees so that when we are done rolling out the rest of these, we can just plop them right into the oven. And I realized I should have saved those egg yolks to brush the top of these with an egg wash because I need to brush the top of these with an egg wash and I used all my eggs, I'm pretty sure. So I need to ask Josh to run down into the chicken coop to see if I have any more eggs, but I'm only getting one, if I'm lucky, two eggs a day. And I already collected the eggs this morning, so I doubt there are any more eggs out there. 
So if we don't get an egg wash on here, I could maybe look up and see if a milk wash is a good substitute or we will just have to skip it today. I decided to go assembly line style. So I'm gonna do four at a time and then I only have to do this one more time and we have all of them done. I did this a little bit too because I wanna make sure I space the filling out evenly. rolled the last five out, which allowed me then to take the rest of the filling mixture and divide it evenly between the pasties so that we ended up with the correct amount of filling for the amount of dough we had, which is perfect. I only have to fold up these last three and then we will pop them in the oven. I think I need to put some vent holes on them. I need to read the recipe one more time. I can't remember that if I need to do that step and I need to <laughs> ask Josh to run down and see if he can get me an egg, hopefully. If we don't have an egg, we will skip the egg wash. That'll be just fine. They just might not turn out as golden brown, but they will still taste delicious. And let me tell you, this is what we are having for dinner tonight so that I don't have to do any other cooking. I have some green beans that I cooked up two days ago in the fridge. So we can have this with some green beans. And that is one beautiful thing about freezer cooking day is you don't really have to cook dinner because hopefully you can take one of your recipes that you made, whether it be the lasagna or the curry or something, and you can have that for dinner. And I was gifted in my P.O. box a squishy mat that I'm standing on. Let me tell you, that is a game changer for these long days where you're standing up. I can feel it. I'm bending over awkwardly right now because I'm doing this pasty, but I can definitely feel a huge difference in the way my body feels standing on one of these squishy mats. I only have one, so I probably am gonna end up investing in maybe two more, one for my sink and one for my stove. Here's our last pasty going on. I'm, oh shoot. I forgot to put butter in these five. Oh well, that'll be okay. I'm sure they're gonna be just as delicious. I am gonna toss this butter though because I've been touching it with raw meat. I'm gonna toss this flour, get all this cleaned up, I'm gonna reread the recipe and see what we need to do next. So we do need to cut three slits in each one of these. Josh just got me an egg, but as I was mixing it, I spilled half of it onto the cookie sheet. So we're just gonna pick it up off the cookie sheet and egg wash it onto our pasties and then I will take a paper towel and kind of wipe that up just so that that doesn't burn there while these cook. I want to get these pasties in the oven and I need to adjust my oven a little bit or not my oven but my oven racks. going to take at least an hour to bake. So that's going to be a really yummy dinner. I am going to rotate them halfway through 
so that the bottom ones are going to be on the top and the top ones are going to be at the bottom. This has probably been the best I've ever done keeping this kitchen clean as we've been going. I've been really trying hard to do that just so that right now I'm tired and I knew I would be tired at the end of this. I did take about an hour break halfway through and I ate lunch and I sat and relaxed. But I knew that if I kept this a tornado-y mess when I was done, I wouldn't want to clean it. And I wouldn't clean it. I would probably leave it for the next day. And then it takes my one big cooking day and turns it into two. And if I can get all the cooking and cleaning mostly done in one day, I'm going to count that as a win. I'm going to let you know there's a couple things I'm going to leave for tomorrow, but I'll show you what that is in just a minute. I need to put the lids on these lasagnas. So we were able to get three lasagnas out of that sauce that we made, which is always a win. I love it when I plan to only do two and I end up with an extra one. Cool thing about having these in the freezer too, if you know someone that has surgery, who's sick, who has a baby, and you wanna be able to bring them a nice dinner and you don't have time, to make them a nice dinner, you can just pop one of these out of your freezer and gift it to them. So these are cool now, so these can go in the freezer along with all the other meals, but we need to taste test these curries and see how they're doing. So the first one I'm gonna taste is this pumpkin one. You know what I need to do first? My mouth is watering. <laughs> it smells so good in here. Is we need to immersion blend these. Oh, that's so silky and beautiful now. That's our pumpkin one. I'm not gonna worry about just putting this one in here. Look how beautifully smooth and silky that curry is. And this one as well. I cannot wait to try this. Hey Siri, set timer for half an hour. I don't want to forget about the pasties. All right, time to taste test this. Whoa, this pumpkin curry. Ooh, that honestly might be one of the best curries I have ever had. Josh, do you want to taste this pumpkin curry? Yes, but I just brushed my teeth. Oh. I do want to taste it, but it's going to be all off. Don't worry about tasting it right now, but can you smell it? it smells really good. Good. We got three lasagnas. Do you know what I have in here? Did you know I was making? Why? Do you know what Pasties? that is? Pasties? Yeah. Did you know I was uh, making those today? I think you mentioned it. Oh, okay. But I didn't remember. Looks really good. Looks very creamy. This pumpkin curry. So good. Now this is musumum. When I make the musumum curry to for dinner, we're not having this. We're going to have pasties for dinner tonight. I'm going to try to attempt to make non bread for the first, well, second Ooh, time. I like that idea. Yeah. Okay, we're going to give this a taste test. That is pretty darn good too. That is really really good. All right, I'm going to add to this curry. Oh, that is so good. Don't be afraid to use a lot of spices when you're cooking. I give you permission <laughs> to use a lot of spices. That's one thing I feel like not enough recipes call for enough spices. We're gonna add though to this one more jar of our tomato, onion, garlic, just to thin it out a little bit because it's pretty thick. That'll add the acidity it needs. So I'm gonna get two dinners out of each of these curries. Because when we go to cook them, like I said, I'm gonna add vegetables and protein. Oh my gosh. That is fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna turn these off the heat and I'm gonna let these cool. Our granola is done. And this stuff is mm, 
I like this better. I do. I like it better than the last stuff we made, have to say. I need to chop up some almonds. I have almonds that are salted and roasted, but I don't feel like doing that right now. I can get all this in here. I should have doubled this recipe, but I didn't know how much I was gonna like it. I think the egg white is great. You get some nice big cluster sizes, but then you get some loose granola too. So I really like that. Oh man, this is delicious. You know what this tastes like? You ever have those Nature Valley bars? Those really dry <laughs> granola bars? This is exactly what they taste like. And I always like those. I do have some dirty dishes in this sink. And I am going to leave those for tomorrow. The majority of this kitchen is clean. I've got the counters clean. I'm going to take out this garbage and we're gonna put a fresh bag in. Dinner is done as soon as those pasties come out of the oven. I'm gonna get the dishwasher started. Those dishes will fit in this dishwasher tomorrow. So I won't have to worry about washing too many dishes by hand. I'll need to wash my two Dutch ovens by hand. They're sitting right here cooling before I can put the curries into the freezer. Let's recap what we got done today. We got pumpkin curry. This stuff is probably my new favorite curry. And we got tikka masala curry. I think I called this musumam curry earlier. It's not, it's tikka masala. I'm gonna divide these into two. So this is gonna be two dinners each for Josh and I. So four curries worth of dinners. Plus whenever I make one of those dinners, because I'm gonna add protein and veggies, we will have leftovers and we'll serve that with rice and non bread. Three fourths of a gallon worth of granola. That stuff is good. And then we got two sweet and sour meatballs, three lasagnas, two lemon chicken or smashed chicken, lovingly referred to, three honey mustard marinades. Two of them are chicken, one of them is pork, and two teriyaki chickens. Delicious. Plus, we have 12 pasties in the oven and that's what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. Oh, that's my pasties, I need to rotate them. Now that they're rotated, they're gonna cook for another 30 minutes. I hope this is encouraging to you that you can make freezer meals out of almost any recipe you normally would make, whether it's a marinade, a curry, a pasta. It doesn't necessarily have to be a casserole. I, I think lasagna technically is a casserole, but it doesn't have to be a casserole to be a freezer meal. You can get super creative. I've got a whole playlist worth of freezer meal preps, breakfast freezer meals, dinner freezer meal ideas. I can put a playlist right here. So if you enjoyed this and you want more inspiration on other recipes, you can go here and enjoy that. We did not get to the stroganoff today. That's okay. I'm probably not gonna cook between what I've cooked today and what I've cooked the last few days. I probably don't need to cook anything for three or four days. We are gonna be set and I'm really looking forward to that. So I can switch my focus from food and we can finish organizing the baby's room. We finally got the crib and the dresser. I've washed all the clothes, but now I need to start putting it away and need to get a little few more organizing things. And I don't really wanna think about food. I did a bunch of canning yesterday and I've been doing a bunch of food prep. We did some breakfast freezer meals the other day too. So I'm kind of fooded out <laughs> as much as I love being in the kitchen. I don't wanna be in the kitchen every day. And today was a long day, productive day. I'm so glad you are here with me, spending time in the kitchen and just getting a lot of things done. But now I don't wanna spend any more time in the kitchen. I'm gonna ask Josh to put all this stuff in the freezer for me, because I need to go pour myself a cup of tea and relax and then we are gonna enjoy pasties for dinner tonight. And I'm really excited about that. How I'm gonna freeze those pasties is I'm gonna let them cool completely. I will keep two out for dinner for Josh and I tonight. I'll keep two out for leftovers and the rest of them, they'll cool completely. 
I'll put them in freezer bags. They will go in the freezer. They take about 20 to 30 minutes to reheat in the oven from frozen, and they make one of the easiest meals. I love them. I'm so excited to have them in the freezer. You probably hear my dishwasher going. I will finish those dishes tomorrow. I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my kitchen. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you found value in it. If you found value in this video, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you're new, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you around. We do a lot of cooking, canning, gardening. <laughs> We're going to be building a brand new garden this year and a lot of food preservation and we just have a lot of fun together. So I hope you're having a great day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.